we connected over so many different things and we have so many things in common. And that's why I think even to this day, like we're around each other basically 24 seven and it's so easy. Like people are like, how do you like work and like live together? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't do that with my partner. And it's like, we're prefer to be together. Like when we weren't working together, it would be like, like so exciting to like come home or like I'm on my way home. You know what I mean? And so it's nice to just like be together all the time. Hey everyone, I'm Deanna James with my husband Colton James, and we're here interviewing Amanda and Dre, who own Electric Feels Studio in Dallas, Texas, which is also an all-female tattoo studio. Just so cool. We're excited to talk with them and uh, learn some things about owning a business together. What movies do y'all watch? My personal favorite is Clueless. Yeah. Like, you mean at the shop? Or yeah. Clueless? You just loop that at the shop. Clueless. Yeah, anything from that era. Mean Girls, Clueless. Mean Girls like, is on a lot. Basically, anything like Dry Bar plays, I'm good with. <laughs> yeah. Disney. 13 going on 30. Yes. I don't know. Sometimes it gets weird. Like, if someone gets a hold of the remote, they'll put on something random. Yeah. You get a lot of anime played. Yeah. Yeah. The whole vibe of y'all shop is so cool. Thank you. Thank Your guys' shop is cool. You're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that. Yeah, I feel like um that makes getting tattooed go by the fastest is when I'm like watching stuff. Um, I was getting tattooed by Jesse Riggs and we watched some normal things. We watched like Back to the Future and that was good. And um I put on Big Mouth at one point and I knew it was raunchy, but watching it with somebody else is like <laughs> this is really bad. Yeah. So I turned it off. Which yeah. episode was it? Uh, I was <laughs> I can't. I don't want to say it on, on camera. But uh so yeah, that'll that'll show you how raunchy it is. Oh yeah. So it's that we've bad. had some inappropriate stuff. Yeah, on, we had we had a accident. guest artist and their partner came in and they put on something. Um and my client was just like, Oh my god. And I just looked up and I was like, Oh my god. And again, can't tell you what it was, but I hurried up and changed it. And then there was someone else and they were like, Yeah, so and so was doing this and this and this. I'm like, I'm so sorry. That's embarrassing. Yeah, I even get like a, I even get um, shy about the music we're playing sometimes. I do. I don't want anybody to be turned off by the music we're playing. Like what? We like in we genre were, or in lyrics. Yeah. yeah. We were doing an interview, and oh, in the middle, a Mac Miller song God. played, and part of it is like, uh, it's audio of like porn. And so we were in that room interviewing a person with like moaning and stuff going on in the background for a good minute. And we're like, yeah, yeah. so sorry about that. That's, yeah. Cause, uh, that's cause just Mac Miller. Yeah. Mo would come in the mornings and put on like Mac Miller radio. And so that song would come on like, like it happened like multiple times where yeah. that song would come up. Oh, and at the time, one of our artists was using the phone to do like a FaceTime consultation. So like she couldn't turn it off. So I was like, no more radio because that song comes on Band. every time. And it's a great song, but at the very end, yeah. Yeah. There's that. And it's, Just you know, porn. It's, yeah, oh, yeah. Not a vibe. I love like 90s and early 2000s rap. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. So inappropriate. Yeah. So what do y'all listen to at the shop? We have like a collective Spotify liked playlist going on. Okay. And you can tell whose music is whose. That's fun. I don't think any of us like the same music yeah everyone's got a different thing so like the shared playlist really helps yeah but I would, it's also fun because you could like make fun of people and be like i know this is your song yeah, yeah you like this <laughs> you, isn't yeah. It? yeah i like have taylor swift going and everyone knows it's me you know but i don't know a, a podcast comes on and it's me you know <laughs> i just listen murder to podcast i don't even listen on. to music anymore <laughs> yeah murder podcast yeah but that's cool a collective playlist yeah yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to like get everyone on the same thing though, you know? Yeah. And yeah. also like fit the vibe of the shop. Cause like I was saying, yeah, you just, I can't play just whatever I want because nobody else wants to listen to that. So, yeah. yeah. And that goes for a lot of things when it comes to running your shop, finding things that <laughs> work well all together and for everyone. fits the vibe for everyone, trying to take care of everyone and yourself and the business and make everybody happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't that go into kind of like uh, what we'd like to talk about today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So y'all run a shop together like we do. <laughs> and uh, Dre, you tattoo. And Amanda, you kind of 
on the business side of things, yeah. although you're doing microblading now, right? Yes. <laughs> How yeah. did you get into that? Um, I mean, I've always like enjoyed like makeup and beauty and fashion and everything. And so when I quit my corporate career at the beginning of this year to like really focus on, you know, just the shop and our business, um, I think it was just like something that really fit kind of my interests and yeah. like what I also think we're missing in our shop. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. So at the very, very early stages of it, but yeah. I'm it's excited. been like announced, right? I didn't like, no, I yeah, didn't like it's spoil been announced. It. Okay. It. No, you're cool. all good. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't coming out till later. So <laughs> it's already announced. We're, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, I'm excited. Yeah. So. She already did her first set of eyebrows and I'm just blown away by it. Like it's not, it's not fair. I mean, it's fair. It's expected because she's good at whatever she does, but I'm just like, <laughs> what? You just tattooed someone's face like perfectly. And so it it's like, scary. it's ombre too. So it's not, it's not uh, microblading. It's like with, a machine yeah, yeah. It's crazy. is it so it's technically like with a liner basically mm -hmm. right yeah. and you're like Stipping. shading mm -hmm. like stipple shading yeah it's the ombre powder brows that i'm gonna do i am too terrified to take a scalpel to somebody's face <laughs> so <laughs> slicing someone's <laughs> face open. you just no rub interest in, it. in that whatsoever <laughs> on my end but i mean i've just also been around a machine obviously for a very long time so i feel more comfortable picking that up than I do. Maybe if you were a surgeon, I'd feel different, but. <laughs> Thank God I'm not. <laughs> How does it feel now, like having machine in your hand and like, do you feel like you can almost relate to tattooers on a whole nother level now that you oh know God. what it feels like in your hand? And I think the first time she had me like pick up a machine was during COVID and it was just for fun. And we like, I drew like an outline of like a super simple flower and I went to like pull a line and then to like just feel like how it shakes in the fake skin. I'm like, how do you get a straight line? Like it was this instantaneous, like I've always had respect for artists in the industry and like especially people who are like really good at their craft. But then to like have it in your hand and feel what it feels like. I'm like, I don't know how you pull any, like especially fine line. And then to like pull it and then lift up and then try to get it right back in the same spot. <laughs> it's Unreal. Hard. Yes. <laughs> it's hard. Yes. That is wild. So it was definitely like, it made me have a, even more respect for the people that do it and do it well. Ugh. It's a lot. That fine line stuff is, I like, I don't know how Dre does what she does. Like it's a whole other style. I think, I think both of us don't know how either because her eyes are just always like so tired from like, <laughs> blinking so hard. Oh my God. Yeah. Dry stuff you do is so detailed, so fine line, so clean. Yeah. I mean, the technical aspect itself is incredible. Too kind. And it's so hard to do. No. Um, but it's so cool. And, and also I, I would just like to also formally introduce Dre and Amanda who own electric fields as a studio <laughs> in Dallas. Um, and they are also a married couple who owns a tattoo shop like us. So it's really cool that yeah. we have kind of people we can talk to about everything, who know exactly what we're also going through and yeah. Yeah. Also just really good friends of ours. So I feel like we could just talk for at least an hour about anything. So it might be hard to keep it to an hour. Let's yeah. <laughs> well, you guys got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so right. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to do a part two eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. definitely want to know more about, I guess, how it feels like being a couple, running a whole shop together, how you manage shop, like business life and regular life and the balance between that. How do you guys go about separating those two things too? <laughs> <laughs> Separation? What do you mean? There's yeah. the answer. What yeah. is that like? Balance. It's tough. I, it I think we're learning along the way. Yeah. You know, there's definitely like, I know what I'm good at and I know what she's good at. And we've like learned that. And then um, I'm not really good at it at like the business side. So and she's just so good at it. And I trust her completely. But, you know, um, I think it's also nice because we're best friends and we yeah. like to be around each other a lot. And, you know, whatever idea she has, I'm like, that's an incredible idea. And like vice versa, I feel like. But. I think for like separating 
work in our home life, we have to like, we've now been like, after this time, we're not talking about work. Yeah. That's tough. It's yeah. so tough yeah. because yeah, it's literally 24 seven. Yeah. There's always something going on as you guys know. And that's very really. new, probably within the last like month where we've had to like put those boundaries in place because there wasn't any of that. So like, it was like, there was no separation of like work and home. Yeah. You know? And I think it was also coming from a corporate background and like going through the pandemic, there wasn't that separation for me either for the last couple of years. Right. So like, it was very natural to like, just constantly be talking about work at home because I'm working at home. So even when we you know, our, when I left that job and was able to go full fledged into our business, I'm already used to talking work at home, you know? So it was almost like learning how to like, okay, now we need to like turn that off. So we don't talk about work and we can just actually like talk, like we're a couple again, you know, not (laughs) just business partners. And so, yeah, I think, but also like reminding each other where it's like, you say a comment and it's like, and we're not talking about work where we're like, yes, thank you. Thanks yeah. for the reminder. We're not, we'll talk about this tomorrow at 10 a.m. That's smart. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like when you own your own business, it's tough too, because it like consumes your entire life. So maybe if you have a regular corporate job or something and you're not working from home, you come home from work, it's easy to just kind of, you know, separate that or not think about it. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, whatever, that's a work, but you own your own business, it really consumes so much of you, you know, yeah. so it's tough yeah. to. It's also exciting because like you, usually when you start your own business, it's something that you love and you have passion. Yeah. About. So it's like, it's, you're, it's natural to want to talk about it, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. yeah, drawing that boundary was, it took us, we've had our shop now for like two and a half years and we just figured this out like a month ago. So yeah. <laughs> it takes time. Well, if the past, we've been trying to kind of do the same the past month like really kind of like recognizing it and trying to set that boundary yeah well the not talking about work is a great idea and that we haven't set that boundary yet um i've been doing like a lot of stuff with the social media so i'll i'll try to set a boundary of like okay after the shop closes after nine o'clock even if i'm working from home that day i'm not gonna do any more work that sort of thing and i feel like that's been good and also something that i've had to like learn along the way and really just kind of get used to and figure out how to set those boundaries. Right. Yeah. Cause like, you know, being, being together, like at the shop, like as far as like quality time goes, goes, cause I know from me personally, it's like, um, my love language is quality time and that means quality time. So being at the shop all day together, it doesn't feel like, Oh, like we're together all day. So it's important for me to have that time at night to like have that quality moment where we're making eye contact, where we're like invested in each other's lives outside of work. And but yeah, that's, I, it's interesting that it, it's the same thing for everybody. It sounds like, or I don't know about everybody, but for you guys too. Yeah. I mean, I think the hard part would probably be more on her end. Like I can shut the business side down. But when you have to like draw and prepare for Mm. your appointments, it's a lot harder to say, okay, like I'm cutting my day off at this time. So like, I think that's where it gets a little bit hard to like come home and not have that quality time because, you know, she's got all of her prep stuff. So then it's easy for me to be like, cool, I'll just get on my computer and like do more work stuff, you know? So I think it's like making better use of our, like the time that we aren't like in the studio on those days. So like our Mondays and like getting like a lot more stuff done during those days. So then yeah. when she's off, she can be off when she's home Yeah, and that we're still figuring out. Cause you don't like have a day where you like draw everything. You kind of just like draw the night before. Sometimes sort of like usually like Sundays and Mondays, I'll like try to prepare for the whole week. Um, Cause I don't like feeling panicked in the mornings, you know, right. I'm not a morning person either. So like I can get to my appointment like an hour before. That's great. But the hour goes by really quick. So. And what yeah. time, what time do you start your appointments? So it's either at 1130 or 12. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm up all night, like drawing, not all night, but like, you know, I take mm-hmm. my time and some things, some days it just doesn't click, you know, like if I'm like trying to plan something out, like there are days where it's harder than others putting For something sure. together. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like the creative juice isn't there. So now that's so hard too when you tattoo all day and then come home to work more and to draw for the week and having to do that at home too. Like I, I remember when I had done that, I felt like I didn't have time for myself. And there's so many tattooers out there that do that same thing where they work from home and they design at home 
How do you deal with any kind of burnout or, I mean, is that inevitable? I think it is. You just have to like keep going because I don't know anything else. Like I don't know, like I feel the burnout and I feel like it's like approaching, but it's felt like that for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think you just have to keep going. Like if there's, there's no option for me to stop. So I always just try to do my best, whatever that is. And I make sure it's like, you know, the best that I can perform. Um, it is nice only tattooing four days a week, but it does feel like I do everything all week long. So sort of. yeah. I'm always yeah. thinking about like next week, like I'm already like, I have so much to do for next week and prepare for it. But I don't know. I just, I just think just keep going until you can't. <laughs> Just terrible <laughs> advice. I, I think it's the, like, once you're able to, like, recognize it and have that, like, conversation with yourself of, like, okay, I can't keep going like this. Like, what what boundaries do I need to set? And so, like, I think the biggest misconception for, like, clients is, like, when you see an artist only work certain days of the week, that doesn't mean that those are their only work days, right? Like, we work seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and so we've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, we need to actually take Saturdays as like a day off. Like we need to do something fun. Even if it's just watching TV on the couch all day, I don't really care if it's that or we go and do something activity wise, but like having an actual day off, you know, and then using the other days as kind of our like prep time. Yeah. Um, but like you can't, it's all tattooing is unpredictable, right? You don't know how long a design is going to take you to design. You don't know how long it's going to take you to tattoo. Yeah, you have a certain time blocked off, but like not everyone's skin's the same. Not everything like, you know, goes in the same way. You don't know what you're going to come across like when you're actually tattooing that can like set you behind in time. And so like, yeah, it might on her calendar say she's going to be off at six, but like it might actually be 10 p.m. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and then if you're not prepared, then you still have to come home and draw for the next day. And so it could get like really overwhelming. So it's just like once you kind of get that flow and understand it, like really like putting these like these are the hours on my like days off that I like have to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then anything creative, too, it's it's not as simple as just completing a task. You know, it's like you said, it's kind of unpredictable. It's kind of ambiguous as far as how long something's going to take you, especially when you factor in the fact, you know, you said creative juices earlier you're not always in that headspace to create something, um, in any, you know, specific time frame. Right. So, and then you add burnout to it and then you're less motivated to create, you know, so that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. You have to fill your own, you have to fill your own jar before you can fill other people's or fill your work. And it's so important to take that time off in order to do all these things that we all do. Yeah. And, uh, that's it's it's definitely tough I kind of want to like also hear from the beginning because this is cool because I I mean there's so much that I feel like I would love to learn about you guys and how you guys kind of started the shop because I know we became friends with you guys um like really close I feel like kind of recently fairly recently kind of like is when we really like started like hanging out and stuff and and so I, I would love to know, like, kind of how Electric feels, you know, the tattoo studio you guys own, how it got started, what made you guys want to open up your own studio, what was sort of the motivation behind it all. And then I know it's evolved a ton from the original <laughs> idea. So yeah. if you kind of want to, like, yeah. walk yeah. us through the process of how that's happened. Sure. I mean, I like... I don't know. I've always wanted to have my own space. And like I like when Amanda and I met, I like told her that was a dream of mine. And she's like, yeah, like we can make that happen. This is years ago. Yeah. We've been together for like almost seven years. Yeah. And then um, just when I moved here, uh, worked in a few shops and that's when you and I met a um, couple of shops ago. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, during the pandemic, like, I don't know, we we're like, let's just do it. Like, why are we holding back on like what we want to build together. Like why wait? Um, I think the pandemic kind of like really put our butts into gear because also like depending on your feelings and like how much of a germaphobe you might be, like the pandemic like stressed a lot of people out, right? And so like being in a space where the cleanliness is already so hyper important than to add a pandemic on top of it, I think it was, I saw the stress in her, like not being able to control mm. the space and like the safety measures being taken. 
and how serious people take it. And so that's when I was like, okay, we need to like really find a place so we can make sure that how we run things is going to keep you safe and myself safe. Because when you're a tattoo artist, there's no sick leave. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If you get sick, you don't work and you don't get paid. And then, you know, you might not be able to make your mortgage or your rent or whatever it might be. Right. So like, it's really important, especially in an era like that, to like keep yourself safe and healthy. And so that's really what kind of got us into gear was like getting a space that we can control and make sure people were being vaccinated or wearing their masks or whatever it was to ensure that she wasn't going to get sick. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of like what got us to like do it when we, when we did. Right. Yeah. Cause you we can control your own environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We um, got our space like December, 2020 and we like opened January, 2020 and it was just us two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. January, 2021. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was just us two in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, back in time. Back in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was the original plan, right? Just to be the two of you, you yeah. know, like a photography you yeah, know, tattoo yeah. studio. So I was doing photography on the side. Like if I mentioned, I had my, um, my corporate job. And so photography was a passion of mine. And so it was always hard finding like the right studio space and having to like rent out other space and keeping my gear everywhere. So it was yeah. nice to just like have a space that was for tattooing and photography since then it's definitely gone more like tattoo heavy, yeah. um, which is fine. And, um, you know, we're both very passionate about obviously her, but like myself as well. And so the photography side has kind of, you know, faded back a little bit on that, but, um, mm. yeah, it was nice to just create a space that like we felt good in. Yeah. Yeah. So how'd you get to involving more people and more artists in the mix? I think it just came naturally, you know, just like more people just that we knew in the industry came to us and wanted to work alongside us. And that was great. And then it just, I, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, we're onto something, you know? So, well, and I think there's a reason that people want to work with y'all. It's because of the, you know, the safe, positive space that you've created. Do you want to speak to that a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we wanted to have like an all female shop. Um, and that just goes into like, you know, like how toxic the side of the industry it can be, like with men being around and, you know, just making sure we all felt safe in an uncomfortable position sometimes when you're getting tattooed. We don't want like any like, you know what I mean? Like we all yeah. we all know what it's like. Yeah, so yeah. it was an, important for us to do that without like uh, being like men suck or anything. Like yeah. That. I mean, that wasn't, <laughs> they don't. that wasn't like the point wasn't to like, exclude men because we don't like men but we wanted a space that women felt comfortable in and that was our priority yeah and like um you know 95 percent of her clientele is women Mm -hmm. and i think working at studios where it's mixed with other artists like other artists want to come and see your work but then if you also kind of get the feeling that maybe this male artist is only coming seeing my work when i have i'm doing a sternum piece Mm-hmm. or a thigh piece, mm-hmm. then you start to realize things. You're like, yeah, that's not so great. I thought that I know that happened to her. And it was like, oh, I thought these artists like really enjoyed my work. And then I started to like think, oh, do they just want to mm-hmm. see my clients? Right. So for us to have a Gross. safe space. Yeah, it happens. Right. And so unfortunately it happens. So the way for us to mitigate that is to create a space where it's all women. Right. And we can all be comfortable we have women that are, you know, just like, yeah, I feel comfortable here. I can just take my top off so I can get tattooed comfortably. And I'm not here like worrying about covering myself yeah. and like, who's going to be like walking by and, pe- you know, taking a look. And so, um, it just made it really nice to have a space where like, we have our artists feel really comfortable and our clients feel really comfortable. And that was the most important thing was because like, when you're also feeling comfortable, like, I think it also like brings out like the confidence in, in yourself. Right. And so like, as an artist, if you are feeling confident, your work's going to be even better. And then your clients are going to leave feeling even more confident, you know? And so I think just having a space where it's like very like women empowerment, we all kind of like, you know, support each other. It just feels really good. And our clients feel that. Right. And that's, it's incredible because it's not about like, oh, you know, like we're excluding men. It's like, we now and offer a place that is for women 
Um, and it's not just women. It's like women, LGBTQA plus friendly, mm-hmm. um, POC friendly. Like it, it's all, it, it's all inclusive, you know? And it's just, it's also, here's a space where this is for us. Like this is yeah. for people to feel so comfortable, you know, cause there, there already is so many tattoo places out there that is essentially like for men. It almost makes me think of like Barbie movie, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's plenty of Mojo Dojo Casas. Exactly. Um, exactly. Mojo Dojo yeah. Tat Casas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> tat Casas. But now like there is now also like a studio out, out there that you guys yeah. have that Barbie dream houses is a yeah <laughs> Barbie dream house you know and it's just so wonderful that you guys are adding a place like that to the community and it's so needed yeah and I think that like in the beginning too I didn't even realize how necessary it was until a lot of clients like would say that and like come and be like I've been looking for this I needed this like I feel safe here and you know and that was just so amazing to me. And I remember when I first started out tattooing and I was like, I'm a female, like how am I supposed to get clients or whatever? And I started getting only like female yeah. clients and they're like, I just feel so much more comfortable with you. And that never even like resonated with me where I'm like, oh, like, oh yeah, that's a thing. You yeah, know? for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not something that we really plan, but like, even if you look at the analytics on our social media, it's like 70% of our followers are are female yeah. and most of our clients are, are female too i definitely feel like there's a comfort there just getting tattooed by 100%. a female artist absolutely yeah and i mean like that's why i mean we we love you guys but your shop too like we hear that all the time like everyone who comes here they're like man we just felt so welcomed and comfortable there and like of course like because y'all are so sweet and welcoming you know so it's like it's so amazing that you guys have cultivated such a beautiful space yeah as well oh, thank you yeah. Yeah. and and the couple men that we do have working here, they're both, you know, they're family so men and girl yeah. dads and and they're just, yeah. Well, I, I think the thing with that we've learned also with having like an all-female studio is like the conversations we've had with men, like clients and artists. So like we've had a lot of male clients come in that are like, oh my God, I love it in here. Like I feel more comfortable here because like I'm not going into a place where I feel like, okay, after I get my done with my tattoo, do they want to like kick my ass in the back? Like, you know, yeah. or they, I feel like I have to like present very like tough, you know, I'm here to get like a tattoo mm, yeah. and they're like in here, it can just like be comfortable. And so that was really cool to hear. And even like we have male guest artists and to just like, you know, see the appreciation that they have and like recognize like why a place like ours is also so needed and to like really feel like, you know, we can give a space for like the good guys that are out there, you know, like there, cause there are a lot and it's so, it's really nice to also know like, okay, well we have someone that's coming in. Like it's also kind of like, it tells our clientele like, you're also safe with this person, Yeah, you know? For sure. And so that's really nice. Like the connections we've made even with men because of having an all female studio. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it's people like you guys, you know, that are helping change the the world and the industry. And it, it's, it's so cool to see, you know, and I love that I'm, I'm seeing it bloom. I feel like more, especially like, um, I, I don't know if, if, I mean, Dre, you, you've been in the tattoo industry, I, I think as long as I have maybe how many years, <laughs> like 10 years. I think you're like a lot longer. Just, I just picture 14, you. 15. I, just, I just picture you with your sign. Like that's all. Like when I like envisioned you like starting out, I just see you with your sign. Um, yeah, it's been a minute. Sign. It feels like a long time, but then it feels like I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Still, that's just I'm me like, in general. Do I know how to tattoo? Am I, should that's I right. be teaching people? I don't know. I don't know. I think that speaks to also like like how great of like an artist that you guys are though. Cause you both know like how much there is to always continue to learn. Right. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, I've been tattooing for 10 or 15 years and I know it all, which some people have that attitude, but then they are, stay stagnant. Right. And like to yeah. see like growth, like year after year, even after so many years, just, I think, you know, speaks a lot to both of your guys' talent. The moment you feel like you can't learn anymore is when you should just quit. You know, what's the fun in that? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But yeah, also being in the industry for so long, have you seen such a change in it before your eyes when you first got here? Or is it, it can't just be me, right? Like it's (laughs) wild. (laughs) Like it's so wild. The (laughs) difference just even 10 years ago. Internet has changed so much. Yeah. I mean, internet shops, this whole industry. um, Oh my God. I mean, the world. Yeah, but. <laughs> well, can you talk about like how you got into tattooing and like maybe like your apprenticeship a little bit? Sure. Because I feel like you came from like a street shop. Yeah. I don't know too much about it, but. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, I would like to know. Oh man, how much time do we have? Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, I was thinking about this, like how I actually got into it. And the first time I ever tattooed someone was in some guy's friend's mom's kitchen. And he had, yeah, something like that, right? Like, I don't remember his name. And I like, I still have the stencil of the tattoo I did on his arm. Um, but that was like when I was like 18. And then I was on the Vans Warped Tour. And one of my buddies Flex. was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing that great. Um, but one of my buddies is a tattoo artist and he was also working on the tour. And one night, like he I was tattooing me and I was like, can I try it? And I just fell in love with it. I'm like, how do I do this? And I was always like an artist, but I just didn't know how to, like, I didn't know what to do with it. Was it painting? Was it graphic design? Was it web design? Like, you know, um, but I just fell in love with it. And I'm like, how do I do this? And he's like, you have to find an apprenticeship. I'm like, how do I do that? And I worked for a year, like trying to find a situation that wasn't going to be too chaotic. Yeah. Like or one, dangerous I, or toxic. Yeah. Like, it, you know, um, one and, was like moving to Panama City Beach and that got weird. That situation got weird. And you were in Utah at this point? I uh, know I was in California at this okay, point. Okay. Yeah. So I was actually living in Portland and then my dad, like I was going to go back to art school. My dad's like, come live with me. And he was in California and he's like, I'll pay for it if you just finish school, just do something with your life. Um, so anyway, so a whole year and then finally my buddy on the um, warped where I was just like, Hey, like, I just kept going into the shop that he worked at and did not leave. And then, um, I traded, uh, my mentor, uh, for a back piece. Um, but anyway, I just like, I just kept going. And then finally he called me one day and he was like, Hey, like the shop owner wants to talk to you. He knows that you want to apprentice here. And I'm like, I'm working. And he's like, I don't care. Like, what's important to you. So if you want this, get down here now. Yeah. Yeah. I was like an hour away and I drove straight down there and I remember just like talking to him and he like, wouldn't even look me in the eyes. And he was just like, okay, like, I guess you're on. It was with uh, eight guys in uh, San Jose, California. And um, it was really tough (laughs) to say the least, but um, I'm very grateful for the experience. And yeah, it was like almost two years of doing it. And then, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot though. I don't know how in depth you want me to go into that whole apprenticeship. As, yeah. As much as you want. Was, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I know you've, you've talked about, there's been some traumas. We, we've shared, yeah. we've trauma bonded yeah, on apprenticeships, right? you know, Isn't that what we're supposed to do <laughs> as tattooers. <laughs> you could dive in as, because I'd love to talk a little bit about like apprenticeships after too. Like, yeah. Well, so. And I think both of y'all have a really unique perspective on the tattoo industry because you came from you know, maybe not the best situation, you know, shitty apprenticeships. And now you both own really progressive, really successful studios. So I feel like you've kind of like been on both sides of like the whole industry, really. Yeah. It's hard. Like, you know, cause I, f- I hate being that person being like, well, this is what I had to do. Like, so, you know, being like that old man just yeah. yelling at everyone, but <laughs> yeah. um, it's important to share the, like what, what you've been through too. And especially for all, all the apprentices or people wanting to get wanting to become a tattooer who are listening now just to kind of put in per- perspective of what it was like just 10 years ago. Yeah. So. It was wild. It was seven days a week. Um, first one in last one out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, didn't matter who was how late someone was tattooing and, and then I couldn't draw at the shop. I always just had to draw at home and like they wouldn't let you or you just wouldn't let me sort of thing just be like you should find your own time i was running around constantly like just setting up breaking down scrubbing tubes yo i don't know if a lot of people even know what that is anymore but like stainless steel tubes and like the autoclave and like so much 
spray went my face and mouth and hence so, being a germaphobe now yeah ah, I, mean, I, I was it. always a germaphobe yeah. but i'm like oh my god if you have everything you can't get anything right um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke that's a joke that was a joke that's such a joke i, I don't know i it's good advice <laughs> it is good advice good life advice um but yeah just like you know, kept my head down too, though, and always like try to watch, but only if I was allowed to watch, you know, couldn't talk to clients because then I would steal their clients. And like, it was just don't smile so much. Yeah. Why are you <laughs> smiling so much? And I'm like, I think it's a defense mechanism where I'm just like, eh, you know, um, but I remember like part of it, like there's these girls that came in one day and, you know, right when Pinterest was a thing and they wanted to get the, these Pinterest tattoos and like the guys were like, what do you want? You know? And they're just like, so scared. I'm like, that sucks. Like that's such yeah. a terrible feeling. And, you know, doing my first Pinterest tattoo, I did like a consolation and I was so proud of like this fine line, you know, and just remembering my mentor, like yelling at me and I started crying in front of everyone. <laughs> and then it was, it was rough. You know what I mean? No. Um, I don't know. I like, I try to, I kind of blacked all that stuff out. Yeah. Um, but again, and like it, it gave me so much appreciation for where I am today because I worked so fucking hard for it. Like I didn't, I didn't stop, you know, as much as I like, I cried like every night. I was just like, went home crying being like, this sucks. Like, and I was so broke and poor and never like, there was one guy who would tip me out every once in a while. It was like 10 bucks. And I was just so fucking poor. And I'm like, I'm never going to make it. Like for how many, two years. Too. Yeah. It was just like, it was, it was rough. Um, like you can't even afford your own gas to get to the shop yeah. at that yeah. point, you and know? I was super fortunate because I got to live with my dad and he was just like, whatever you do, like, he's like, I'll support you, but like, you have to go all the way. Like you can't quit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he, you know, he didn't like give me much, you know, like every once in a while I'm like, Hey, I need like money for gas or whatever. But you know, he, he also like made sure I worked for it. Um, but yeah, I ended up getting fired <laughs> from it. I, I remember I went to my best friend's uh, brother's wedding and it was the first time I took time off and it was three days. And I remember I like uh, messaged my mentor and I was like, Hey, is it okay if I spend like two more days out here? I was like, yeah, of course. You know, I never had time off. And then the shop owner like hit me up and he's like, yeah, you don't want it that bad. So basically like, Fuck after off. two years yeah and it was heartbreaking but I think it was like a yeah. lesson learned for me because he did like because it is so old school you know and like they went through a lot to like get to where they were like my mentor had an eight-year apprenticeship Oof. and that's just and you know what I mean like yeah how dare I complain about yeah. what I had yeah. to go through so you know I just have so much appreciation for this and I I there's nothing Besides her, I don't love more than tattooing, you know? So I just, like, really appreciate it. Should it be like that? Absolutely no. Um, there needs to be an appreciation for it, though, and it's not just a hobby for me. And I think that's yeah, where I get, yeah. like, my, like, old man pants on when people are like, I just want to try it for fun. It's, like, it's hard. Yeah. And a lot of people don't make it that enter into this. Like, right. The fallout is pretty high. Mm -hmm. If you don't yeah. have the integrity for it, you're not going to make it. Right. It, and having, having a similar experience, I know for a long time, I, it, it, when, when you have apprentices of yourself, it's also hard to be like, well, you know, I went through this that so you have to, too. It's almost like you have to forgive those people, um, to kind of like move on and like try to change the industry and, and I, I'm sure you're probably hazed too and how to do like stuff that had nothing to do with tattooing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, <laughs> do you, do you have any of those stories? Uh, I don't know if anything appropriate to say, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, there's definitely like, there's definitely some hazing going on. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's weird. I still feel like like, I can't talk about it because, like, I'm like, what if they're listening and then they're going to be mad at me? You know what I mean? Like, it's it just feels like still like, yeah, kind of like an yeah. Yeah. Was that abusive situation. But I like, but also from it, like when I think a lot of people have that like fear put into them, I'm sure you were told this, like, oh, you're never going to make it like or you're I'm never going to work in this town, you're never gonna work in this town yeah. again. Right. And so, like, when things are told to you, like, even when you've proven to yourself that that's not true, like, I think it still gets yeah, it's if it's you in want the back it, of your head. it, it, you know? it was always 
if, well, if you want it bad enough, you'll do this. Exactly. And that's what, that's the thing that like I now tell other people nowadays, now that I've healed from my apprenticeship and all those experience, I say, fuck all that. Like do what you can as long as it's healthy and you're not hurting yourself or others. Yeah. That's what I'd like to change about that sentence. It's yeah. like, yeah, do whatever it takes as long as you're okay and you're in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Because before it was, it wasn't that. It was like, despite whether you feel safe or not, you're going to put yourself in these positions, whether you like it or not, or else you don't want it bad enough. And that's what we were told for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Especially women. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I think we're yeah. put in a different situation too, you know, because being a woman too, like I, I don't know. I felt that way a lot. Like I remember like too, like a lot of the artists, like their, their partners or wives or girlfriends, like didn't particularly like me. So I like had an extra, like, calm myself down, not calm myself down, but like just soften myself so much, you know, just, just be a shell. Well, they didn't want you still on their man. Yeah. I had to look out. <laughs> Barking well, up the wrong tree. <laughs> so after you, I'm, I'm curious after you got fired, fired, what happened, what happened next? Did you go to another shop or yeah, did you finish yeah, your yeah. apprenticeship somewhere? Yeah. So my buddy who, um, from Warped or is like, once I start, once I got my apprenticeship, he actually got fired from the shop. So he was like gone. So I didn't really like have oh, him. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But he had his own private studio nearby. And he, so, and I had appointments then. So he was just like, hey, finish out your appointments. Like you can work in my studio, whatever. Um, so he, he helps me so much. And then um, I was about to move back to Salt Lake City. And I met uh, a, a tattooer friend at a convention and I was like asking her, I'm like, hey, is this what it's like? You know, and she's like, yeah, unfortunately. And I was like, well, I'm thinking about moving back, like to back home. Like, what am I doing here? Especially because they're like, oh, you're never going to tattoo in California. So yeah. I was like, okay, I better go. Uh, and then she was like, no, you have to work in San Francisco. Like, you have to, like, let me talk to my boss. And so um, I met up with him, the owner of a shop up in San Francisco. And sweetest human and he was just like hey like, shout out to dave dog yeah he's one shot us. um but he like uh he's like i don't care too much about your like your tattoo skills he's like i just care if you're a good human and you have good um customer service skills i'm like i excel at customer service <laughs> yeah and so and so katie vouched for me he like gave me the job gave me a shot and um so i really thrived there Mm. And that's when I was allowed to like see that a shop doesn't have to be toxic and it doesn't have to be like ran a certain way. And I didn't feel any like it was it was so uh, just refreshing. Yeah. Like it was the first time I like realized that like it didn't have to be so rough. Yeah. yeah. And scary. Yeah. And hard. And it could be a little bit more like a family. Yeah. Like, it, felt, it felt very more like family vibes. Like I was taken care of and supported. Yeah. I and then that was so great for you to yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then when did y'all meet during all this? During that, when I was yeah. at one shot. Um, I think you'd been there for about a year. Yeah. And then uh, we met on Bumble. Yeah. How did the first interaction go? Like, how did it all start? Who talked to who first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to force her on a date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was on Bumble more like... Um, like, I'm to, a tattoo artist. I, like, can get clients off of Bumble. Yeah, I was trying to get... That's, like, because I was right where Instagram was kind of, like, being popular. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was hitting up cafes and universities and being like, hey, you want a tattoo? Like, I was hustling like that. I didn't just, like, go on Instagram. That's like, badass. Yeah, and so, like, I was on Bumble being like, hey, who wants a tattoo? You know what I mean? It was different then, right? You couldn't just be yeah. like, hey, I'm new. Like, I'm offering discounted rates and have, like... It, that visible for thousands of people like she was going into pete's coffee and asking the baristas like can you want a tattoo that's <laughs> yeah. crazy it's free. Yeah. Cards, yeah. Like, you, know? you know i remember my first like stickers i had to cut out myself yeah you know um wow. but, but yeah i i had on my profile i said if you like pasta and dogs shaped like pasta we can be friends or something yeah because I have a corgi and he looks like a little penne pasta. And not like spaghetti. <laughs> he's a little, he's a little <laughs> long. Spaghetti shaped yeah, dog. He's long. <laughs> long yeah. dog. Yeah. Um, and then Amanda responded with, uh, how about gnocchi with a picture of her Frenchie? Oh. And it oh was done. God. 
from there. And I've always wanted a Frenchie. So it was funny. My best friend and I actually spent like an entire day coming up with that opening line. No way. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it worked. It worked. <laughs> but it, I, it like, worked for I sure. I remember when I met her, though, like she had such a cool tattoo collection already. And she knew some of my favorite tattooers and like people I looked up to. And she was just like so about it and so supportive, like my number one fan from the get. And I was not good at tattooing then. I still, you know, still not now, but like, you know, she's still just so supportive of every, it's like you Colton, like that's what I love so much about your guys' relationship too. Like mm -hmm. you just so supportive of her. And it's like very similar yeah. to you where I'm just like, you feel so much support and you're just like, yeah. It's definitely easier when y'all are both awesome tattooers. She jokes around a lot. She's like, it's a good thing you like my work because this would be kind of weird if you didn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, I, I also to really her if she it. was a bad artist, like I also can't fake it. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're not very good at this. She's not. She can't lie at all. <laughs> no, I can't lie. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to. But um, I mean, I've always had a respect for the industry. I've been getting tattooed since I was like 17. And like, yeah. I just have always like, I love getting tattooed. To me, it's more like collecting pieces of artwork. And I love... Um, you know, like meeting different artists and like making those connections. And so when we met, I like, like I said, I kind of like forced her to go on a date because like we were talking, but it was kind of this like, okay, are we going to go on a date or not? Like, you know, I'm not here to like be pen pals. Like, let's go out. <laughs> and at that point, it was like, pals. this is also like 2016. <laughs> Trump had just got, you know, nominated. None of us, especially in the Bay Area, were in like a good mental state. Mm. And so she's like, I'm not looking for anything serious, you know? And so that's kind of where I had to come in and be like, listen, I've never had to like force somebody on a date. Like, <laughs> I was like, but I have to be up in San Francisco. So just I'll make reservations. I'll set the time. Just tell me where to pick you up. And so she said, fine. And we always joke about that. It Don't was... look at me like that. Oh my God. <laughs> and her friends were like, you're an idiot. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? Say yes and like go on a date. Like, this will be good for you. And um, so we went on our first date and she gets, um, well, I guess the like funny part is like, she, I was like pulled up to the street and I started to get nervous then. And I was like, maybe I'll just like turn around and go home. You know, it was just like right when I pulled around. up. And um, I called her and, or I texted her. I was like, I'm like out front. She's like, I don't see you. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm not even in the right space. And she's like, just kidding. I'll come out. <laughs> so she gets in my car. And the first thing she tells me is my roommate said I should brush my hair, but I didn't. <laughs> that was it. And that was I it. wasn't ready for it. I told her yeah. that. Yeah. She had to force me out on it. So she saw me in like my truest form, right? <laughs> like I like, was not ready. There was like a hole in my shirt. I'm just like, not feeling and she's always so done up and I'm just like man this isn't I don't know where this is gonna go but anyway this it is went, where it went. went well I guess yeah, yeah. I mean I yeah. that was the thing like on our first date like we both love to talk and so it just like the conversation just flowed so yeah. naturally and like we had so many things in common and so and I like I felt her passion for like what she was doing and I know that she was like newer into it at the time. And I think like not having like the full support of like the people around you, like I could feel that like pain. And I'm like, no, you can do this. You just got to like stick with it. You know what I mean? Like, and so I think that kind of like helped us bond a little too, because I always knew like it was there. It just takes time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think we, um, we connected over so many different things and we have so many things in common. And that's why I think even to this day, like we're around each other basically 24 seven. And it's so easy. Like people are like, how do you like work and like live together? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't do that with my partner. And it's like, we're prefer to be together. Yeah. Like when we weren't working together, it would be like, like so exciting to like come home or like I'm on my way home. You know what I mean? And yeah. so it's, it's nice to just like be together all the time. Yeah. People ask me that all the time. They're like, what's it like working with your partner? Like, I don't know if I could do that. Like, I don't know. I think I just, I like her. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. Step one. <laughs> I, I think it also actually helps that we do like really different things in yeah. the normal course of business. So like we're in the shop together all day. We're around each other pretty much all day, every day, but we're not always directly interacting with each other, right. solving problems and stuff like that. We're like, a, we are like the same 
couple. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I'm the Colton. It's, yeah. <laughs> you guys and what we do. So it's interesting. But yeah. so, um, okay. So was it after this first date that you guys were like, okay, this is, this is it. Like we're connected or did it take some time to bloom? It's kind of like a lesbian thing to do, but like, <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a solid. What's the, what's the term for it? You yeah, yeah, yeah. U-hauling. I learned that um when we watched the ultimatum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. saw exactly. <laughs> and they got a lot it, of them. U-hauling. A lot of the yeah. times it doesn't work out so great, but it, we got lucky and it did. Yeah, I think what helped is that we did long distance for like seven months, and that kind of like tested mm. like our direction of what we're doing. But but I think we were already pretty. I think it was like this instantaneous, um, I like it's cheesy, but it's kind of like that. Like when you know, you know, and I think we both really just knew like after that we connected on a lot of different things and the conversation was just easy. It was just easy to be around each other. Like the comfortability was there like right Mm -hmm. off the bat for both of us. For me, like more, more than that is just like, you know, there's so many great things about her, but her heart is so big and generous and like just seeing how she would like treat people around us on our first couple of dates. Like I'm just like, that's how I am. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm like, she's just such a good hearted human and she's smart. I always wanted to date someone smarter than me. <laughs> and then I found someone who's like really smart <laughs> where I'm just like, I don't, I don't get anything. So. <laughs> It's perfect. But I think we really knew like on our third day is when I had to tell her that my company was moving me to Texas mm. and she started crying. I was like tearing up. Oh my God. I mean, you went to the bathroom. You liked her. Yeah. And that's when it was like, okay, we like, I think that's like when I like, cause I knew I hated having to tell her that. Cause I also didn't know what that was going to mean for us. And had you just yeah. found out or did you know that like from the first date? I knew date? that from the first date. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't expect, mm-hmm. we both weren't looking for gotcha. anything serious. I gotcha. was planning on moving. She wasn't in a the right mental state. I was looking to tattoo someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so like when we made that connection, it, um, I think it made everything hard. Like I started being like, well, like now I don't want to move. And it was just like a really difficult situation to be in. So y'all did long desk distance from California to Texas. Yeah. For okay. seven months. That's like long, long distance. I was yes. thinking it was different cities in California, but that's yeah, even, that that's too, way tougher yeah. too. Yeah. Wow. And so we had like two months together once I told her and we basically spent like every single every day. day together. I don't yeah. think we went one night without being together. Gay. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and so then, and we were supposed to do long distance for a year. Oh, and said, that was, did you say gay? Yeah. <laughs> you said yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> and um I think we just like we're having a really hard time with that like I mean and even for those like seven months of long distance we saw each other at least every two weeks yeah like, I was constantly flying out there yeah. like she was coming here mm-hmm. and even just like those two weeks in between were like really tough to be apart and then I remember like the day where she's like okay I can't do this anymore like I'm gonna like come sooner than later I was so happy that's so awesome <laughs> yeah that's great it was it I, I having her support like that did it make your kind of your tattooing feel just a lot easier to feel like you had that totally yeah I mean like too Amanda's just the solution listen I don't know what you call that <laughs> uh but yeah she like had a situation like if she was like uh she got a guest spot for me when I first like wow. came to visit and then like you know she set up a an opportunity for me to work here as well um mm-hmm. But also even before that, she was just like, you don't like you can take time off too, you know, like yeah. and find the right opportunity or situation for yourself. Like she's always just been mm-hmm. like I told her I wanted to start a band in the garage and she's like, cool. Like, you know, she's but like more so she's just always so supportive in anything I do. But like for tattooing, she kind of took over my communication, like yeah, my emails and stuff like that. And it was a significant difference of how I've just like that's how I'm booked out now. Yeah, I'm oh, not. I'm, sure. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at text. You know this. Like you both know this. I'm not a good communicator. Um, so she like took over that, and that instantly just skyrocketed everything. Yeah. So I I feel like you know mm-hmm. I owe a lot to just her taking that over and just like always just being my number one cheerleader. Yeah, I think it's hard for artists to take that all on. And there's like some people who are very much like keep everything close 
to their chest. And it's like, that's great if that works for you. I think that's a lot to take on. And I also think it's great to like utilize people's skills and what they're good at, right? You don't have to take everything on. Like you can also delegate things to other people and let them be responsible for those things. And like, I like communication. And so yeah. it was nice. Like, I'm like, hey, you focus on drawing and art. Like, let me take over the yeah, emails. Yeah. And even that, like for me and taking over that, like, um, has progressed into very different things, like going from email to like forms and our booking site and like all these different iterations of like how to make things more simple for clients, which if I was also tattooing, I wouldn't have the time to figure all of that out and like to yeah. put those processes in place. Yeah. Like it's a lot to take it all on. Plus then you have social media, you have to draw, you have to do your bookings, your schedulings, your communication with clients. I mean, it's a lot. And yeah. so like, that was, I think important for us is like the learnings that I've had working, you know, with her books for the last five years, if not longer, maybe six years now at this point, um, you know, taking those learnings and implementing those in our shop and also like, um, our, the thing that we pride ourselves at our shop is like, no one's a gatekeeper. And I feel like you're very much the same way, right? Like that's a different, like a way that we can also try to like help change this yeah. like industry is like, how do we share the knowledge that we have to make things better and easier? Um, and so like being able to like utilize those skills and share them in our shop yeah. and like help artists, like, you know, to like put things in place, it's going to make their lives easier. Yeah. Right. Well, the skill set thing, I mean, that's really kind of one of the premises that we opened our shop on. So I told her at the beginning, you know, you're really good at tattooing. So you just do that and then we'll take care of everything else. And now with the, you know, the people that we've hired, we try to make it the same way for yeah. our artists where, you know, we just take a lot out of their hands and they do what they're awesome yeah. at, which is tattooing. And then we kind of focus on everything else. Exactly. I feel like uh, as far as being a business owner, you should only do the things that only you know how to do and mm -hmm. pay someone else to do the rest. I agree. And I think, um, owning a business, having that type A and type B, that left and right brain, I think makes a huge difference. And it, we're, we're lucky enough to be married to them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. How do we do that? Well, I don't know. But uh, yeah. And even I think of my older brother who he's always had Tony when he opened his um, commercial agency, he was the art director. He needed a businessman. And just like having a, a business person, having the artistic side of but putting both together for anyone who's listening, who's trying to open up a business or anything mm -hmm. like that, find a good partner um, that has that other half of the brain. Yeah. I think makes And it doesn't sense. have to be your like life partner. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just yeah. Be a business yeah. partner. Yeah. But like finding somebody that like knows what they're doing and yeah. can help. I think um, having a like sense of like the artistry and like, um, definitely a respect for whatever industry that is like on yes. the business side of things is also important. For right? sure. Cause like, um, there are certain things, especially like coming from a corporate background that like, I think work really well that like most artists wouldn't implement, but I think really help set boundaries and put things in place. And then there's other things that like will not work for this industry, totally. you know? Yeah. And so like finding what that balance is. And that's part of like, owning our business and like going through hiccups of like, okay, this really worked. This seemed like it was going to really work and it really didn't. So like, how do we adjust and like change things and be flexible? Totally. But like finding somebody that, um, for like artists out there that are wanting to open up their own business, like finding a business partner that understands the business, but has knowledge of the industry, I think is so important. Definitely. Yeah. And I was actually thinking about that just this morning. I feel like, um, myself, you know, I had a little bit of in, uh, experience in the tattoo industry, just getting tattooed. But I feel like just the lens that I'm able to look at things through, um, you know, sometimes it's very conducive for figuring things out and doing things like a more efficient way. I'm sure you're the same way. Mm -hmm. But then also you run into some things that it's like, okay, I, we definitely can't do that here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think it's really important to at least, you know, have a respect and an understanding yeah. for the industry. You know, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, we talk about, about city, shitty apprenticeships. You know, I don't... Uh, think that it should be done that way anymore but i also appreciate you know what y'all have gone through to um, exactly you know what you had to go through to work so hard so i think it's important to have both sides of the coin you know yeah. to appreciate it but then also use your background and your skill set to bring something new to the table i think also like you and i are clients right like we've been getting yes. tattooed yes and like as much as y'all may have tattoos and our clients other artists being an artist yourself keeps you from really experiencing what it's like to be a client 
And so like being able to know like, okay, I wish I would have known this or like, like I, like a lot of people don't get the information they want up front. I remember going to so many yeah. tattoo appointments. I'm like, I have no idea if this is going to be $500 or $5,000. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have no clue. Like that was always so much stress for me. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I can even pull out enough money for today. So like for us, it's very important to like get pricing like upfront before a deposit's even paid. Like, Definitely. you know what you're getting yourself into before you put any money down. Like, yes. you know, making sure you know where the, what time to be there, the address, getting calendar, like, like, uh, you know, um, and bikes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like knowing where to park, things like that are just so important yeah, to like make sure. it easier on a client. And it also like comes down to like the artist because it's like, you're, you're less likely to have someone not show up. Yeah. They yes. have the information Absolutely. that they need. Yeah. And I've been really fortunate and I've pretty much only been tattooed by really legitimate artists, but it's always fun for me when I go travel somewhere else just to see how other people yeah. Do it, you know, but I always try to look at things from that perspective as like, okay, if I'm as a client, you know, what's best for me, what works easiest for me, you know, how would I want to go throughout that process if, I, if it was me doing it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's so important to have that perspective. Um, I, and I'm just curious because, like, I think of you as like, I mean, you're very intelligent, you're very capable, you yes, seem to have sweet. solutions to like everything, <laughs> you handle so much. Um, I, I kind of want to know, like, have you always been that way? Like, were you really good in school? Like, how'd you get into the business side? Or like, I don't know if, if you can sum up yeah. like your childhood and how, how you were. I kind of, <laughs> I'm curious where it all came from. I mean, I think um, I've always had like this personality. Like I've always been very like type A, like I like to get things done. I don't like usually have a hard time talking to people. And I also like to learn from people and see like, you know, what they do, how they do it, where they struggle because mm -hmm. I am naturally like a problem solver. Um, so like, I wasn't always great at school. I got um, kicked out my freshman year of like a private school. I had a 1.33 GPA, like Wow. Had to like go into like public school, had no friends, knew nobody. And so like it put me in a different situation. I'm like, okay, now I have to like talk to people that I don't know. And like, I think that really helped wow. push me into like making connections with people. Um, and then um, I graduated, went to school for fashion design, realized I don't know if I'm going to be like the next like you know, fashion, big fashion designer. So like, let's be realistic. <laughs> and, um, I went back to school for electrical engineering. So like right side and left side wow. of my brain, I think are important to me. So like, You're um, both. I'm both, but like heavier on the analytical side. So I, um, went into my like 10 year career basically, and, you know, was kind of doing our stuff on the side, um, you know, helping her going from like, she worked in a different shop, shop managed things to like me, ha like handling her books. And then that just kind of like grew over time. Um, and then just being around her and seeing like, oh, this is so nice to like, you get to like love your career. Like you get your like passion and I don't mean hobby in like a bad way, but like the things that you might consider if you have like a nine to five job, like what your hobby might be to like actually make that your career and your passion. Like that's like so exciting. And so there was like a part of me that was like slightly jealous because I'm like, I have to, you know, go into like a very stuffy corporate situation, um, like very technical. <laughs> and, yeah. and then to see like, oh my God, you get to like make art and like your art gets to live forever on people. And like, this is something like you like love doing. And so that's where I kind of got to like pick up more of the photography side of things. Cause I always really enjoyed doing that. And she was always like, so supportive of me kind of having that, that like the things I did on the side that like let my artistic mm -hmm. side out. Um, and then, you know, when we made like made that decision that it was the right time to like own our own business, like I kind of got to like, just like move the things that I didn't fully enjoy, like out of my life and like really just focus on like what we want to do and like put that time and energy into like helping us grow and not some like, you know, $14 billion, like, you know, corporate industry <laughs> or like just yes. a corporate yeah. <laughs> entity, yeah. you know, like that effort, like goes into us and our artists and our clients and like making our space, you know, improve. 
one of the many reasons to start your own business. And I, I think it'd be cool to know too, for anyone listening, who's like in the corporate world, just like you both, you know, went from more of like wanting to do corporate or wanting to do, you know, something a little bit more of a normal job, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. like for people who are wanting to transition into their own business, doing something they're more passionate about, what, what are some things or some tips on how to learn how to make a business and how to learn how to, you know, do, with, with the finding the property or like figuring out like the money side, like, is there any like tips or tricks in transitioning over to making your own business? I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. Right. I, I worked for the last five years, like doing side, like stuff outside of my work hours. Right. And like becoming proficient in this industry and booking and client communication and things like that. And then, um, our shop was open for two years before I left my corporate job. So mm -hmm. like, I felt like I yeah. was working 24 seven cause mm -hmm. I literally was. Um, and so the beginning is really hard. And, um, but like, if that's really what you want to do, like you're going to find the time, you're going to find the passion that might mean like other things like fall to the wayside, but maybe those things aren't where your energy needs to be focused anyways. Right. So like, if you know where to like focus your energy and you are excited about it, like it doesn't feel like work. That's why I was like, you get to do things like every day that doesn't feel like work, you know, like that's yeah. incredible to be at a place like in your career where that's what it is. Yeah. I think too, is like to, um, limit your expectations, <laughs> like not to have such high ones, you know, cause I feel like when we're just like searching for a space, it was like, this is it, this is like, you know, mm -hmm. and then it would fall through or it would work out, blah, blah, blah. So, um, have like some real expectations. And then also just to talk to other business owners. I think that's yeah. helped us so much is like, we've made friends with a lot more business owners and like, um, yeah. so we can like, kind of like go back and forth and figure out, Hey, what did you guys do for this? We did this, you know, and like try to figure it out that way. There's also a ton of resources if you just look for it. Um, but it's hard. I think if anything, like, you know, my favorite, quote is like, I quit my nine to five so I could work for myself 24 seven. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. It's a lot, Absolutely. it's a lot more work. And like, I, I say this often and where I'm like, I didn't know I would be working so much. And Amanda's like, well, what did you think this was going to be, <laughs> you know? So, um, finding other business owners and like talking to them, seeing how that goes and like pacing yourself out. There's, there's a lot that goes into it. And again, it doesn't happen overnight. Like just city permits, just working with the yeah. city. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and, <laughs> and I think you said it really well, you know, you should kind of temper your expectations. I mean, be, you know, be lofty, have goals and everything like that, but, um, try not to get too bogged down if it doesn't happen exactly the way you want it or as fast as you want it. Cause I actually kind of had the opposite, opposite experience of you. You know, I wasn't doing a corporate job and I decided we wanted to open a shop. I had just dropped out of law school. And that's, that was, you know, right before COVID started. Um, so I, Very corporate. I didn't have a lot to do all day. You know, it was a lot of like, okay, do this work, hurry up and wait, you know, for the city or for yeah. landlords to email me back or whatever the fuck it was. So there was a lot of me like feeling like I wasn't just contributing and, you know, just getting really depressed. And I definitely had moments where I was like, this is never going to happen. Like, we're never going to be able to do this. Um, so yeah, it's important to persevere through that too. Yeah. I, and I mean, that's exactly what I was going to say, um, which is like to stay positive. I think it's like really easy to like go dark and to like, if like one thing doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, that like, you can feel like nothing's going to go your way. And I think that that's probably like the biggest hurdle to overcome and like trying to like implement something that you're really passionate about is like, it's not going to be easy and not everything's going to fall into place. That doesn't mean that it's not going to happen or can't happen. Like yeah. you have to stay positive. Um, and I think like Dre said, is like talking to other business owners because you'll see like people go through the same struggles and you're not alone and yeah. you can like learn from other people and like what they did, what, what they did that didn't work, I think is the most important thing to like understand, you know? Yeah. And I think one thing that's been kind of like a big awak awakening for me, cause you know, at first I was like, oh, you know, I get to make my own schedule. You find out that you're always on the clock. You're always working. You're always thinking about business, but you know, people say like, oh, I, you know, I want to be my own boss. I want to work for myself. 
It's like, okay, yeah, technically I do work for myself, but I think if you're doing it right, you realize really quickly that you're not working for yourself. You're working for the people around you. You're working for your family. I I work for the artists in my shop. You know, if I fuck off and don't do any work, it's, I don't have a boss telling me to do that, but I've got to put in that work for the people around me because I've got to do, you know, everything I can to make sure that this is successful and the people around me succeed. Yeah. So that's, you know, you don't have somebody telling you to do those things, but it's, it's definitely there. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we got to get to Book of Mormon. We're kind of <laughs> out of time. Uh, do y'all have anything else that you want to tell the world? I mean, I just, I know like for you, it's so important to like make a change in this industry while like holding true to like, you know, the respect you have for it. And I think that that's something that we like really resonates with us because we feel like the same way. So it's it's nice to not only like see other people doing it, but like we are fortunate to be in the same city and kind of be doing it side by side and to like have each other to like lean on. And you guys have been a huge support and like a huge resource. So we just want to say thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Amazing. You guys are the best. Yeah. We love just being friends with you too. I mean, yes. Like, hang out with you anytime. We need to go yeah. pickleballing soon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We also haven't pickleballed in a long time. So maybe yeah. it'll be kind of even now. Yeah. 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 I feel like it was swinging towards us. And oh, yeah. We had a good run in the beginning, though. Yeah. We'll, we'll oh, get yeah. it again. We'll yeah. get it again for sure. No, but uh, thank you guys. It's such an honor to it be really here. It really is. feels so special getting to sit here and talk yeah. with y'all. Thanks for coming on. I feel like yeah, we'll definitely you. have to do a part two because I feel like there's just. So much. so much stuff we could talk about. I feel like we could go for another hour or two. Yeah, easy. So. Whenever. Yeah, oh, we awesome. love you guys. Yeah, we love, yeah, we you, love guys. you too.